Welcome to the Path Monk Presents podcast. Today, I am super interested to hear what our guest has to say. You can find their company, um, Fuzzy, the pet parent company, on ABC, CBS, and the Wall Street Journal. He's the EVP. He does marketing and growth at Fuzzy. Greg Allum. Greg, it's great to have you on the show today. Pleasure to be here. Okay, give us, give us kind of an aerial view of the company. What do you guys do at Fuzzy? Yeah, our mission is really to uh, educate and empower pet parents uh, to extend and enrich their pets' lives. So we sit squarely in the uh, pet health and wellness space. Uh, and we have a couple of products that really help us, or products and services that really help uh, pet parents become the superhero in their pets' lives. Uh, that's uh, 24-7 live vet chat. So imagine you have an acute need uh, or just want a consultation with uh, a vet team to understand if you need to triage uh, an issue with your, your pet. That could be anything from um, their poop looks a little bit odd, uh, they're being sick, uh, to wanting to understand how to brush their teeth. Uh, yeah. You can um, get in touch with one of our vet team via chat and they will guide you through uh, the next steps or triage to a, to a, a vet if you need to go into a, a specific office um, or, or vet clinic. Uh, and secondly, we do preventive meds. So supplements that tackle kind of six core areas uh, that we know that pet parents are focused on. Uh, that's anxiety in their pets, skin and coat, dental, fleas and tick, which is a year round challenge, especially in America and in some of the, the hotter climates, uh, digestive and uh, joint mobility. Amazing. Sounds like you guys are doing a lot for the pet world. We're trying to. We're trying to. There's <laughs> lots of if, you, if you think about America, just in your know, context, um, around 50%, 110 million pets don't have a primary care provider. Okay. So, you know, I think the, the work we do is, uh, hey, we, th we think you know, we're pet parents, we built it for pet parents. Uh, we think it's really important that the dynamics between the pet and the pet parent changes uh, in regards to health and wellness. And so clients are basically anybody who has pets, right? <laughs> if you have pets. Uh, well, at the moment, we're cats and dogs, right? So okay. I, I, have a, I have a tortoise. Unfortunately, my tortoise doesn't get... Uh, access to uh, some of the services we do, but we'll probably expand, expand out in, in the coming years. Okay, great. And so going, uh, thinking about your acquisition channels as a company, you were telling me that you guys are um, relatively new to the scene. What, yeah, what would be your top acquisition channel for, for Fuzzy? Yeah, we made big strides. Uh, I came aboard about six months ago where we were very heavily focused on Facebook only. We made big strides in the last six months to pivot and uh, diversify our media acquisition strategy. So now we're spread across uh, Google, uh, Facebook, um, affiliate, um, display, um, direct mail, connected TV. We started to <laughs> spread out uh, across everything and really deploying a full funnel acquisition strategy. So really understanding how to reach audiences on mass, right? We you know, subscribe to uh, the belief that, you know, if you want to grow as a brand, you have to reach everyone in the category, not just a small niche of an audience who may be highly profitable, but we, we're a massive market, uh, company. We want to make sure that we reach everyone and, and democratize our services so people can use them, if, if, no matter about income or age or demographic, the challenges remain the same. Uh, and then we use um, different methods of uh, remarketing, understanding where the consumer is in the journey, very much similar to, you know, uh, Pathmonk and, and, and your, your talk. So we can then maximize um, surfacing the right content at the right time to that individual that helps them on their journey to be a better pet parent. And in turn, that drives uh, better revenue uh, for us and, and, and better LTV to pay. And what, what is the purpose of the website play and, and client acquisition? Yeah, website, I think we have, the, the ecosystem for us is interesting. We have a web um, service, which is really the, 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 the portal for kind of the brand. Uh, and we're in a big, uh, phase of uh, rebranding and rebuilding the website to make it clearer on what our services is or are. Um, we're you know we're a startup Series B, so uh, we're making big strides to to drive clarity. So the website is really a portal. I, I kind of consider it like a business card, so where people yeah. land and understand um, who we are, uh, what we do. There's also account management portals there. So if you become a, a subscriber or a member, you can manage your your account via the web. But really, yeah. Okay this away from the web is is, is app we yeah. have an app that sits at the heart of what we do and that's uh, for the use of a better term and i don't know our ceo probably hates this it's the fitbit for pets right it's health trackers it's ways to manage uh, your account 
you know, buy supplements on there as well. So it has a store element. And we're evolving that rapidly to make sure that's at the heart of what we do. So you engage with um, your pet's health and wellness on a daily basis rather than episodic, like once a year when you go to the vet. You're, you're, you're regularly checking in on your vet, whether it's their itchiness, the health of their teeth, yeah. uh, their energy, things like that. Okay. So, so we'll just talk about the app for a second then. The app, what would you say is probably the primary focus and strength? You already described, you know, kind of the cases that people would use the app for, but in your eyes, what would you say the strength of, of the app that you guys have is? Uh, for me, it's the, uh, you know, the, the, the chat is, is our secret source, right? Our, our, our web chat and our, and our chat in the app. It allows you know, users to connect to uh, vets and, and solve some of those issues. So I always think that's front and center, but the app is really an ecosystem that we're evolving to be that more health and wellness tracker. And you can upload medical records from any vet in the US um, to start tracking that data. For us, that, that allows us to really understand the type of ailments uh, certain breeds have, which allows us to personalize the app towards your use case or your potential use case. So yeah. to bring to life, let's say I have a Bengal cat, right? He's, he's a beautiful cat, but he's got terrible breath, right? And uh, <laughs> I like, you know, it's kind of an ongoing joke at Fuzzy because I always talk about uh, my, my Bengal cat. Wait, uh, hold on. Is the company named after your pet? No, no, no. Fu- oh, I thought you said, I thought you said Fuzzy. I was, uh, no, 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 my, 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 uh, my Bengal cat's called Lowry. Lowry, okay. the, Lowry Bukowski, a very regal name. Uh, <laughs> but he, uh, he has bad breath, right? And I'm trying to solve that issue. Um, so... The ambition is you're going into the app and because we know you've got a Bengal cat and it's got a dental problem, the health trackers will be correlated to, to that issue. So you'd have trackers around your dental um, teeth where you can, you can kind of track the state of the teeth, the breath. Uh, and then what we know is because you've got a Bengal cat, he's two years old um, and he uh, weighs a certain amount. And we actually know so much about Bengal cats because we have all these medical records that they may suffer from digestive issues when they get to eight years old. Uh-huh. We will serve these recommendations to you saying, hey, you know, do you know that your Bengal cat may suffer from this in the future? It's better to put them on a preventative plan now to save $2,000 worth of vet treatments where you have a, a digestive issue later yeah. on. So what we're trying to get to is this highly personalized uh, programmatic surfacing of content that's related to the pet and products that are going to help extend the life of the pet and make their end of life better. Yeah. Um, and the app sits at the core of that. Uh, it has the trackers, it has the content that's serviced uh, up to you, uh, and it has the chat uh, as well to be able to engage with uh, vet either via web chat or via video uh, yeah. conference. Yeah. That so- I mean, it sounds great. It sounds, like, well, it sounds like a wonderful app. might have to tell my wife about it. But circling back to the fact that you said the website is not where you where you would hope it would be, what would what would be the what, kind of what is your vision for the website in the future? Where would be room for improvement now and in the future? Yeah, I think for me the the, the website serves serve serve can't even say that serves two functions. One is the kind of portal for a, a lot of our users where they they come in organically uh, and via some of our advertising to really understand who we are as a brand and what we stand for. Um, so making sure that, that our brand has uh, a clear point of view, it has clarity uh, in terms of what we offer and what the benefits are and why that would um, help you as a pet parent on your journey uh, right. through that, that, that kind of steep learning curve of becoming a pet parent. And secondly, it's an acquisition channel for us as well. Right? You know, we have uh, an e-commerce store there uh, and we have conversion funnels that lead off into different areas. And the two pieces of work that we're doing this quarter to improve that is Exactly that, the brand, rebranding, uh, making sure that we uh, communicate clearly our proposition. And then secondly, the e-commerce acquisition side of things, making sure the conversion funnels are optimal, uh, that we use heuristics and and behavioral nudges all throughout our ecosystem on product landing pages. uh, So people know what they're buying, they understand the benefits, and also the conversion rates for us improve from where they are currently. And what what are you guys doing to improve those, that? if I could call it a weakness or this, this place where you think, you know what, this, would, this could actually do us well to be better. We are building it from the ground up again, right? We're okay. taking the learnings we have. Uh, we're working with some third party partners, uh, agencies, e-commerce providers uh, and others uh, who use a very research based approach to uh, conversion journeys uh, based off some Baymore prim- uh, principles 
um, the uh, heuristic base, right? You know, so whether it's um, uh, around uh, urgency or social proof, making sure that those messages are surfaced at the right time that helps the customer move to that next phase. Um, it also links to our, our growth strategy, which I, I, I can talk about as well. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so our growth strategy is really, really around uh, something called delightful journeys. Um, and this is, you know, I don't think this is going to be a groundbreaking kind of strategy, but <clears throat> we want to make sure that everything uh, a customer goes through is delightful, right? And that means for us, it's frictionless, right? When you go through a journey, it's, um, there's no dead ends, right? You don't find yourself in a place that you shouldn't. And from a media perspective, there's no dead spend, right? You're not, mm -hmm. we're not spending media on audiences that aren't converting or aren't engaging with the, the, the product. Um, I think that a lot of the time with some conversion journeys and, and especially startups as, as you figure things out, you feel that weight of technology, you feel the weight of the app, right? The, the, right. the low speed, the, the dead ends, the things that have been tested that are launched haven't worked correctly. You know, our philosophy and our approach this year is we've got to move past that. Uh, my KPI in my head is I don't want to say the word scrappy startup anymore. Right? You know, <laughs> like, I think it's used as a kind of somewhat, sometimes sure. there's an excuse. We're, we're scrappy startups so we can get away with not being great. Right. I think we want to move past that. So it's yeah. got to be this for the customer. That's pillar one. Pillar two is um, it's got to be personalized. Right. So as you go through your journeys with us as, 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 as a customer of Fuzzy, let's say a conversion funnel, you select cat, you've got a cat. That journey should be tailored towards that cat, either in look and feel, UX, uh, UI, changing to, to adapt to the, the selections you've made before. And maybe the welcome series, the onboarding series, looks and feels like your breed, right? So we know that there's a lot of tribalism within, within the pet world. And cat owners may not click on a dog advert. Dog, ad, dog owners, again, probably think, you know, they've, they're not gonna click on a cat owner. Uh, uh, but that poses a challenge for us, tech, you know, from right. a media delivery and a conversion product perspective. But we wanna own that and tackle that, and make sure everything's personalized. And the third pillar is um, rewarding. So everything you should do with Fuzzy should give you a sense of, uh, pride and uh, belief that you're doing the right thing. So rewarding for me mean a couple of things. One, it could be purely uh, behavioral nudges in terms of I get a badge because I filled in this part of the app, I've uploaded my medical records. Or it could be rewarding that I've read an article that educates me that I need to do something for my pet, which has allowed me to have a more emotional bond with my pet, which makes me feel better about myself, which gives me that serotonin kind of boost and rewards me for, for, for doing something that is, is the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, what underpins those three pillars is data. Um, a big drive for me this year is um, if we collect the data, we use it for a purpose. I think historically, there's been a, you know, not just our company, but where I've worked before, we kind of collect data, you know, and it doesn't really get used in the right way and it just sits in a, in a, a database somewhere. Right. I think more so in, than any other time in the history of doing digital media, data privacy and the use of data uh, is at its most contentious and at its most powerful. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be really purposeful in the data we collect and how it um, improves those three pillars. So we collect, like, maybe we collect breed, and, you know, but if we're going to collect breed, we want to make sure it uses it to make the conversion funnel more personalized. Mm -hmm. If we collect, uh, you know, user data, they, you know, they, they, they give us the, the, the permission to use that data. We want to make sure we're using it, not just collecting it for, for no right. purpose. Uh, so yeah. pur purposeful data collection kind of underpins uh, those three pillars. Great. And you were talking about how you, how you guys are, uh, well, not, not wearing, I'm not going to use the term scrappy startup, a, uh, a very well-oiled startup. Um, Let's let's stay. Let's come and kind of come down a little bit and look at the structural things. When you have a sales and marketing team, right? You got a you got a nice lead handed to you. What does that kind of how does that look between yeah internally? Walk us through that process. Yeah, I guess we're not we're not so um, segmented in in terms of like you know a B two B sales and marketing organization, right? We're okay. Um, the way we're set up is um, three areas within my marketing department. We have the brand, which deals with content, partnerships, influencers, relationships, and how we appear. And then we mm -hmm. uh, appear to our customers and our, our, our messaging. Then we have two kind of segments off the back of there, which is acquisition. So our growth team within my marketing organization. So that's you know, really how can we acquire most, the most profitable customers at the lowest cost? 
yep. and then the post-purchase engagement team. So how do we take those customers who have you know, qualified as a customer um, and then uh, nurture them through a process that enables them to understand the value of our service uh, and surfaces content and uh, communications at the right time. Um, so, you know, whether that's called a retention team, engagement team, it, 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 it does the same thing, right? You know, it's, it's really looking at um, using tools like Phrase or Iterable to orchestrate an, uh, an architecture of communication for different cohorts of users. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, on times we do uh, free fleas and tip, right, for, for a certain demographic of our audience because it gives us a volume of, 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 of customers. Yeah. But we know those churn at a high rate because they're coming in for the free the free product but what they don't understand at the moment or they haven't understood is that those customers also get free telehealth so what we're doing is making sure that they you know on day seven they get a notification that hey you know why don't you why don't you jump into telehealth and understand the benefits of this and maybe day 15 day 17 we'll offer another discount on their second month to make them stickier so yeah. we're trying to bring in a low-cost customer but not just 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 bring it in for volume for growth volume but actually we want to try and make those sticky um, and, and drive volume but sticking this for a different cohort and then we have a younger cohort who spend more money higher ltv uh, have different challenges uh, probably not you know i know they've got to do free fleas and tick but actually are coming in for a different reason and we have separate consumer journeys for, for uh, those customers as well and we're at the stage where we're segmenting those audiences and trying to understand how do we treat an annual member versus a monthly member yeah. how do we make it more sticky like do we move to fully annual do we test new products with different audiences um, to try and understand the stickiness. And there's a lot of work going on that as we scale our business uh, rapidly after, uh, after recent funding. Yeah, very cool. Sounds very cool. So we're just gonna change gears a little bit and talk about you as a leader. Um, yeah, what, what kind of content do you consume? How do you, how do you continue to educate yourself and grow as a, as a professional, as a person, as a, as a leading a company? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I think, uh, especially working in a startup, with, and this is my start, first startup experience, I have less time to be with my head above the, the parapet, right? I'm, I'm very much in the weeds at the moment as we build the team out. But for me, it's, it's uh, you know, I have a lot of peers within the industry that surface really great content, uh, whether that's Jerry Dakin, who works over in the UK, who I know very well, who uh, does a lot of social media content and digital uh, content. I subscribe to a few newsletters, uh, that deliver uh, a sweet content uh, on a daily or weekly digest. Uh, probably don't open that every day. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, you know, if the title or the email piques my interest, I might dive into. Uh, <laughs> and then from the the platforms themselves, right? You know, I think uh, especially in this world where you have challenges with iOS 14, it's uh, um, having a real close relationship with Facebook, Google, uh, even though they can sometimes be a bit of a black box has enabled me to find the right answers to some of the questions. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time for me as a leader, it's not about the answers. For me, it's about finding the question. I think uh, you said you're in Germany, one of my favorite German poets is Rainer Maria Rilke, okay. uh, who wrote an amazing book called Letters to a Young Poet, which I think is the best book for any creative mind uh, out there. And I always give it to my direct reports. Uh, but it's really about not trying to find the answers the answers will come but you need to find the questions uh the, the right questions like to ask. yeah i like it and you need to have an inquisitive mind so um i think it's really easy also there's kind of a, a bias within your user behavior and my user behavior on the internet to go to the same sources all the time uh you know i go to uh, I'm, a, I'm a spurs fan i'm a Tottenham hotspur fan so i will go to bbc football all the time and that's where my trusted source yeah, I think the challenge I think that I try and do for myself is make sure I find new sources of information because it goes to that kind of echo chamber. If I'm reading from the same writer, totally. the same author all the time, I think I get, I feel like I'm confident that I know the truth, but I've been, I've blinkered myself. Absolutely. So I have to yeah. put myself to, to go on to like Bing rather than Google, or to go somewhere else and type yeah. something different and find a different path. Um, to find some answers and, and articles that may be of use to me. Great. Okay, since we're slowly coming to the end, I just have, we just have one more section of the show. It's our rapid fire section. So, you know, you might be sweating like you're in your jacuzzi there, but uh, uh, I'm gonna try and go easy on you. You ready for it? Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting this, but let's do it. Um, okay. What was the last book that you read? 
uh, the last book that I read was, oh my gosh, good question. Don't, don't lie, don't lie. Uh, the last book that I read uh, was, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, Flea uh, from Red Hot Chili Peppers has got an awesome autobiography. Okay. Uh, can't remember the name of it, uh, but I read that over Christmas. What's the single thing that your company is focused on at the moment? Uh, our single, yeah, our single thing is acquiring customers uh, most effectively by uh, evolving our products and services, as well as scaling our business uh, significantly. If there were no limits in technology, what would be the one thing you would want to have fixed in your company? Um, it's a great question. Um, for me, um, clarity over data, making sure that we can see. Uh, full funnel, who those users are, what they're doing, uh, and 100% uh, and attribution accuracy. If you were to start, well, you're starting the company now, right? <laughs> you said that. <laughs> the question is normally if you were to start over today. So, and give yourself any advice, what would it be? Well, you just, well, I mean, go, go back to a couple of weeks or months ago. What, what would be the advice you give, two you, things. give yourself? Well, two things, don't underestimate the startup challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, probably one of them and two uh go easy on yourself right i think this world with covid um as a leader as someone in a startup so i'm motivated i think you know the number of hours people work i think to try and get a result it has changed dramatically overnight in the last 18 months or so, 12 months or so so i think you know find time for yourself and uh don't underestimate the challenge Okay, and the last thing we do on the show is we always give our guests the last word. So if you, there's something you feel like you would really like to talk about or you missed, go for it. Or if you, you just want to say something to kind of sum up everything that you've already said, the floor is yours. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. I feel like I'm in uh, Hot Ones. If you've seen the, uh, the, 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 chick, the chicken wing uh, uh, edition in YouTube where they asked them a very similar question. Um, right. Yes. Yes. I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great, it's a great, uh, product. my, um, I think that there's one thing about the company that I'm super excited about, uh, and that is we're building out a new product, um, essentially being the university for pet parents, uh, educational subscription boxes. So each month you'll get a course as a pet parent that enables you to be a better pet parent. Could be the basics, the fundamentals, how to clean your cat or dog's teeth, how to trim their nails, educational play. And by the end of that course, you'll be um, a far better pet parent and feel empowered to look after your pet's lives. Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm super excited about because I think it puts us in a position that no one sits in within the um, pet health and wellness space in the US uh, and super excited about scaling that. Um, so I think that's probably the, the thing that I would like to tell everyone about. I think that's something I'd love uh, people of this podcast to keep an eye out. We're, we're going with a demand gen test in February and then launching officially in April. Amazing. Well, that was Greg Allum from yourfuzzy.com. Greg, it's been awesome having you on the show. My pleasure. Thank you.